Deuteronomy 19. Hallelujah. I always like teaching the process that leads to certain blessings. We live in a generation where many people only know about blessings and the promises. But you see, every time you open your Bible, if your eyes are seen very well, you don't only find promises. You find promises, you find principles, and you find instructions. Hallelujah. The word of God does not just give us promises. It gives us principles and it gives us instructions. And we thank God because we have the opportunity to learn of his way. He showed Israel his acts, but to Moses he granted access to his ways. When you know the way, you can reproduce the results again and again and again. Deuteronomy 19. I give you the highest, highest praise to the King. I give you the loudest, the loudest praise to the King. I lift my holy hands, highest praise. We give you the highest. Tonight we give you the loudest And Lord we lift up holy hands Lord we lift up holy hands I give you I give you the highest name. Name, 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 Lord, I give you. I truly give you. I give. I give you the highest name. I give you, Lord. You see, friends, I'm not trying to sing a special number on stage. Hallelujah. I've not been called into the singing ministry. But when you comprehend certain levels of the light and the glory of God, your worship becomes a response to that revelation. You are not trying to recite a point. You come to a point where even your body cannot control the motions of worship again. Because your spirit is so cultured to rise above the grip of your body. And the flesh has been so deadened to a point where every time there is synchrony, your spirit answers and your body responds. It becomes an involuntary thing. That's why I'm singing. Ninaimaka. 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 Sujada. Naimaka. Naimaka. Ninaimaka. Sujada. Lord, I give you. I give you. Lord, I give you. My highest praise. Lord, I give you. I give you. Wow, let's get to the word. You see, let me tell you something. Hallelujah. Not every revelation in the realm of the spirit can be taught. Hallelujah. There are certain revelations in the spirit that only come on account of your stillness. The Bible says, be still and you will know. There is a type of knowledge that is imparted in your spirit when you are still. 
you don't know how you know it but you just come into that comprehension there is a kind of knowledge that comes when you worship it's a response and a result of the intercourse between your spirit and the spirit of God and so you come with certain revelations you cannot account for hallelujah and so sometimes when God raises songs like this although our minds may not understand but these songs have a way of positioning our spirits so that certain depths of the spirit can enter without your resistance the people in the world understand this and they know the role of music in culturing the mind and bringing it to a place where it can allow certain things to happen they use these principles in hypnosis they use it in all kinds these are spiritual principles Deuteronomy 19 I'll be teaching on spheres of influence spheres of influence we're going to be examining from the word of God the principles of enlargement and territorial influence hallelujah influence over geographical regions and over territories where certain kinds of people under certain conditions become principalities over given territories and their voice is registered as a code in the realm of the spirit that every time they raise their voice there is a response all across the span of the territories that has been given unto them for influence we're going to be joining in the word of God I hope you came with your Bible now it's not the time to pinch your neighbor it's amazing how that Jesus empowered his people by teaching them they stayed with him for three and a half years under an intense atmosphere of the anointing and afterwards they shook their world Deuteronomy oh, thank you Jesus what is this that I see in the spirit I see a fountain I see a fountain flowing a fountain flowing in the spirit Deuteronomy 19 just one verse and then we'll begin the teaching hallelujah are you there Deuteronomy 19 verse 9 one to read if thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them which I commanded this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk ever in his ways. What will happen? Then shall thou add three cities more for thee. Beside these three, Lord, cause your word to prosper. Teach us something tonight and show us a mystery in the spirit. Cause your word to prosper. You see, I had a revelation some years ago. And I saw... The sky was open unto me and I saw a mighty door and the door looked like an ancient gate and a door at the same time and then I kept looking and then suddenly the door was the cover of a book at the same time you know these ancient Jewish books and then the door was open unto me and when it was open I saw many doors again and then I heard a voice that said, look closely. And when I looked, I saw that upon each door was written a scripture. There were many doors and on each door was written a scripture. And it became that the scriptures were the keys to that door. And the Lord told me that every time you lay hold of light, a door is open in the spirit. And when it is open, it will have a ripple effect. Even in this earth realm. And you will begin to walk in the authority that the blessings of that door brings. And tonight by the Spirit of God, I trust that the Lord will pick us and lead us through a door that is responsible for enlargement. Hallelujah. I tell you friends, bless God for the ministry that you belong in. Because 
I can tell you with all humility, there are not many men of God who are in synchrony with the program of the Spirit again. It's possible to be walking for God and not walk with Him. Hallelujah. It's easy to move in the motions of ministry you have. I hope you realize that without prayer, I can just carry a scripture and open and share something that will look like it and smell like it. Do you realize that it's possible to see the wind and the cloud and the rain, but the voice will not be in it? The Bible makes us to understand that there was wind and there was fire. There was rain, but the voice was not in any of these things. And there are so many motions in the realm of the spirit that look like the Holy Spirit. They sound like the Holy Spirit. They are patterned after the things of the spirit, but they do not have the substance of life and power. There are very few ministries that place their ears upon the heart of the Father to understand His patterns. You see, there are certain manifestations of the Spirit that are cyclic in nature. Follow me. They are repeated patterns. And that's where we need the fathers. We need leaders and mentors because by reason of their experience and their walking with the spirit when they hear certain sounds in the spirit they say this is a familiar sound by reason of experience i have encountered this sound in the days of my youth and they can guide however there are certain patterns of the spirit that are not cyclic so it takes a position you do not use experience to discern these patterns you have to depend on the holy spirit that's the reason why God created us to be inadequate by default. He created us and left a void in us so that we will ever be dependent upon him. This is how man was created. And so we must understand the things that God is doing. Let me tell you something, friends. There is a transition in the realm of the spirit. And there is a button that is being passed. The times of our fathers are wrapping up and there is coming a new breed. The question I always ask myself is, are we going to start another move? And I cry every time and I say, Lord, let me not succeed in creating a movement. <laughs> let me succeed in advancing your kingdom, that your kingdom will come. That's why I love ministries that are bent on the kingdom. It's amazing. Many Bible colleges do not even have any reference to the kingdom. They train people for years. They teach about prosperity. They teach about power. We teach about anointing. We teach about ministerial ethics. But we do not make any reference whatsoever to the kingdom. And tonight I pray that the Lord will cause light in our eyes. Even as we explore the word. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1. I'm teaching on spheres of influence. Spheres of influence. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Many people stop there. But that's not even the best part. Read on. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in where? And then, and then, and then, amazing. The Bible shows us a progression. It says you will be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, and then Judea, and then Samaria, and then to the utmost part. Was it not enough for him to just say you will be witnesses in the whole earth? Why did he have to be meticulous to say you will start in Jerusalem and then to Judea and then to Samaria and then you will cover the whole earth? This is the foundation of our teaching tonight. It's amazing that when Jesus walked upon the earth 
he acted as though he was limited in his impact because every time he would send people he would give them specific instruction not to cross certain territories but he was the king of kings he focused all his attention on israel when he sent the 70 he said make sure you do not go outside the boundaries of israel go to the lost sheep of israel every time he encountered people who were not israelites he seemed to be careful it seemed as though there was a rule in the realm of the spirit that limited him and his impact across territories are you following me now at a certain point when he wanted to heal someone he had to take the person out of one city into another one and then he healed him hallelujah every time god calls a man and god anoints and equips the man to represent him and to carry out the agenda of the kingdom he always starts in where the bible prophetically calls jerusalem hallelujah it's amazing how the concept of spheres of influence is that the anointing and the grace that god gives people follow me they are limited according to territories hallelujah that's the reason why every time god wants to bless and anoint a man oftentimes god will tell him the location where he will meet with him and when god anoints that man he will tell him the jurisdiction of the function of the anointing hallelujah beckoned on isaac and said do not go out of egypt you will sow in this land the power and the grace for the word that i'm speaking is resident within this territory he told abraham he said come leave your place there is a place i want to show you are you following me now the concept of spheres of influence and territories because there are so many people that uh you know we live in a day and age where everybody wants to expand especially in prosperity in power we want more money we want more anointing we want more lands enlargement has always been the subject in the bible the kings fought for more land they wanted enlargement because the larger a king was the more he had influence and so they would kill and fight and do everything a point came where there was controversy as to who really be the the land belonged to and then speaking by the spirit david said the earth is the lord's he said hey let's end this controversy you people are fighting over pieces of land I've said it and let me say it again there are no real landlords in this earth everybody met land everybody met land there is only one legitimate land owner the Lord and he gave that land to Abraham hmm. we're not talking about that let's continue hallelujah And so when God calls a man, he grants him a measure of his grace and his spirit. Follow me. And then God grants him a revelation of that which he's supposed to do for the kingdom. You see, it's amazing how many... The first thing I want to talk about is the dilemma, pastor, of not understanding the program and the agenda of the kingdom. There are many ministries that are founded upon emotions founded upon the quest for profession hallelujah amazing how many men are running without the message they do not even understand the program and the agenda of the kingdom hear me friends when god calls a man he does not send that man he calls the man he said come and i will make you there is a making in the spirit hallelujah but can i tell you something whether god sends you or not when you run you will find yourself moving that's the problem the bible says except the lord builds a house it didn't say the house will not be built he said the laborers will labor they will build it but it will be in vain because we understand that cain departed from the presence of god and he still built a city are you following me now so the first thing we want to address when we are talking about expansion and enlargement is coming to 
understand what the Bible calls the gospel of the kingdom. There are many gospels and many preachers preaching all kinds of things in town. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of ministries and ministrations scattered around the face of this country. With the overseers having all kinds of titles. Apostle Joshua Selman. Prophets this and that. Senior right reverend this and that. Chief servant this and that. And, and, and so on and so forth. And now there's nothing wrong in all these titles. Except for the fact that I do not see an understanding of the patterns of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says that it be done in the earth. As it is in the heavens. Hallelujah. And if we realize that God has an agenda, say after me, God has an agenda. We did not come to happen in space. The Bible starts by revealing to us that the agenda of God was corrupted. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 says the earth was dark and void. And I believe you know that between Genesis 1 verse 1 and Genesis 1 verse 2 was a very long period of time. Genesis 1 verse 2, the darkness came as a result of the judgment of Lucifer. Hallelujah. It was the judgment of Lucifer that led to the chaos in Genesis 1 verse 2. According to Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14, the Bible says how that Lucifer was the value cherub. Are you following me, please? It's a teaching tonight. Lucifer was the valued cherub. His adornment was an instrument of worship. He was literally made. And his movement as he walked upon the coals of fire, upon the mount of God. The Bible makes us to understand that he was the cherub that covered us. And one time he told himself, he said, I will arise above the stars of God. And according to the revelation that was shown John, he said there was war even in heaven. Because Lucifer wanted to exalt himself above the stars of God. And then he was judged down in the earth. Hence, the flood that Genesis 1 verse 2 shows us. Are you following me now? And then in verse 3, he says, let there be light. That was not sunlight, I hope you know. It couldn't have been sunlight because a few verses later the bible says god made many lights and then he made two great lights one to rule the day one to rule the night so what light did he say let there be the bible says to us in the beginning john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he said he was in the beginning with god and through him was all things made without him was nothing made that was made he said in him was light and that light is what became the life of man. And then the Bible says, every time you take in the word of God, the entrance of your word is able to produce that light. Are you following me now? And so what is the agenda of God? Let me quickly start by telling us the agenda of God. I have, I am on a campaign to restore the church to the understanding of the program and the agenda of the Father. Hallelujah. The true apostolic ministry is a voice that beckons on people and tells them, come and let us realign. Hallelujah. Let me summarize the Bible very quickly for you. The Bible starts with a king who has a kingdom. Are you following me now? A king who has a kingdom. And he creates a colony of that kingdom and calls it the Garden of Eden. Are you following me now? And then he created man in his image and his likeness. Can I tell you something? Why is Satan looking for men? Why, why do we have all of the manifestations? Why do we have Satan disturbing people? Do you know why? I'll tell you why. Satan is not looking for you because your name is called Joseph. Or your name is called Elizabeth. The position that Satan always wanted to rise to a point where he becomes equal with God. When Lucifer was judged, 
the ministry of satan was what god transferred to man and in addition god gave man what satan had been looking for are you following me if if god removes what he put in man and gives stones satan will not look for any man again on the earth suddenly all the spiritual forces of darkness will start looking for stones to what end does satan want to cause catastrophe to men are you following me now the bible says if the foundation be destroyed what will the righteous do there is a pattern and an understanding and i bless god for the teachings and the trainings in this ministry that builds us but pastor one of the errors that i see in church is that many people are building but not according to pattern and according to exodus chapter 40 until the house is built according to pattern the glory of god will not show up can i tell you something do you agree that zinc is required to build a house do you agree that you need paint to complete a house how many of you have built foundation and started painting it that's the that's the error and the aberration that is happening in the church so we have revelations and we do not know where and what time which revelation should come in and so there are many believers who do not even understand the agenda of god but they know the seven rivers in the spirit and they cannot find where to fit that code in the spirit are you following me now we have several people who do not know the person of the holy spirit and then they are trying to access certain dimensions of grace and so there is not only need to build but there must be a building according to pattern there is a construction of revelation that aligns your spirit in a way that you will command light in this realm if we lay this foundation and we put zinc on top do we have a house but is zinc wrong listen is zinc wrong but what happens you will need to build the house to a level at that time you will call on the carpenters and other people and then they will build the house one of the things i'm challenging many people is we need to begin to challenge what has informed our ideologies what has informed the sum total of our mindsets we need to come to a point where we find out how well we have aligned and synchronized ourselves with spiritual realities hallelujah so let's continue and man was given that position that satan wanted hallelujah and then satan tried to corrupt the race are you following me now and when man fell in the garden of eden the bible makes us to understand i hope you realize that when man fell he gave satan the keys to the kingdom hallelujah he gave satan the keys to the kingdom that's what jesus christ went to collect in hell when he died revelation chapter one i am he that was dead and now is alive and i have the keys from genesis chapter one until the resurrection of jesus christ satan was the legal possessor of the keys to the kingdom are you following me now that's the reason why when he showed jesus all the kingdoms of this world and said i will give it to you jesus did not say you cannot give it to me because as at then he still had the keys follow me thank you jesus we need to understand the message of the kingdom very very properly a prophecy was left after the fall of man that made satan uncomfortable until the appearance of jesus a prophecy was left he said the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent suddenly satan understood that there will arise one who will restore this kingdom i follow me now from genesis chapter 3 until matthew chapter 1 please listen carefully everything that happened from genesis chapter 3 to matthew chapter 1 was only transitional are you following me now the law was not part of god's original agenda i hope you realize the bible says the law came as a schoolmaster the law came to show us how bad we fell so that we will appreciate grace when it comes if i tell you you have five you may not know how bad you failed but if i say you have five over hundred and i say do you want a makeup test now i've given you a reference point are you following me now so god gave man the law he knew man was going to break the law now that man had broken the law no man was righteous and no man could have the life of god 
until Jesus came. That's why the Bible says, although Noah was a righteous man, all the wicked people had died. Only eight people on the earth. A prophetic symbolism of new beginning. And then a few verses later, we see that Noah was drunk to a point that he removed his clothes. Question, who brewed the beer for him? Because all the wicked people had drowned. Who brewed the beer? That sin nature was still resident in man. Are you following me now? Now, Satan began to search for everybody he suspected that was carrying that seed. Are you following me now? That's the reason why when Moses was born, the spirit of the Antichrist began to put a search. He said, could it be that this is a guy that carries the seed of the woman? Because the manifestation of that seed would mean the restoration of the kingdom. Are you following me now? And that's why he commanded that all the children be killed. Why were children killed in the days of Moses? It furthermore proves to us that Satan is not as accurate as many people think he is. Because if Satan were as accurate, he would go and get Moses in the river. It was his inaccuracy that he said, kill everyone. We shall know he's among the children. And by the wisdom of God, Moses navigated his way. And when Satan found out he was not the seed, he began to study carefully. And when God enacted a covenant with Israel, suddenly Satan zoomed his search to Israel. Did you notice that? All the other nations started fighting Israel. Because Satan was saying, that means the seed has to be among this territory. All that Satan has been pursuing is the seed. That seed that will cause the restoration. Hallelujah. And then he caused the death of many people and all of the stories, the law and the prophet. And then the Bible makes us to understand that a very tattered prophet who ate wild locusts and honey just meandered his way out of prophecy and they called him John the Baptist. And the way he was behaving made the spirit of the Antichrist uncomfortable. And the spirit of the Antichrist speaking through the scribes, they said, tell us, are you the messiah we want to know are you the seed so that will destroy you quickly john said don't ask me nonsense i am the voice of one crying he said what kind of confusion is this we have been looking for the seed right from the garden of eden are you following me now and then when jesus was born suddenly there was a star that led the wise men and when they came and met Herod something happened the moment he said a king is born the spirit of the Antichrist rose up in Herod king king restoration the seed of the woman and he said now begin to search find out anywhere across this land where that child is that I will come and worship are you following me now because he knew that no two kings can reign in the same kingdom that means the birth of one would mean the end of another are you following me now and when jesus was born satan started scouting around thinking that john the baptist was the seed he made them to capture john are you following me now satan thought that john was the seed and then they captured john and john was innocently wondering what he was doing in the prison and then when it was Herod's birthday, what happened? Herodias, the spirit, the same spirit that was in Jezebel, it was a spirit that moved in her. And she said, I want the head of the church. What is it about the head of a man? It wasn't about the head of John the Baptist. It was a total annihilation of whoever will carry that seed. Are you following me now? When they killed John the Baptist, the devil got to find out that again he made a big mistake john was not the person jesus was born and satan had been marking him carefully but you know you are what do they call it is he innocent until proving guilt or something like that and then jesus went to be baptized the moment he stepped out of the water there was a voice god said i'm no longer hiding it listen this is my beloved son he was saying, Satan, do your worst.
little did Satan know that it was an execution of the wisdom of God. The moment it was declared, Satan began to conspire. Are you following me now? Oh, so the father himself. Do you know that Satan is so faithless that although God had declared that Jesus was the seed, after his temptation, 40 days, Satan came and said, if you are really the son of God, in other words, I want to re-verify so that we don't kill an innocent person again. And Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Isn't it amazing how Satan will want you to prove what God has already said you are? He told Jesus Christ something. He said, listen, he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said, hear ye him. Hallelujah. And now Satan was asking him, the same thing he asked Eve. Is it really true? Satan will always ask you, is it really true? <laughs> Are you getting blessed? And so Jesus began to walk. And Satan started conspiring. Began to conspire. And then at the last supper... Jesus was at table with the disciples. Follow me. And he said, one of you will betray me. And then he took the bread. Because you see, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Is that correct? He said, the soul that sinned, it shall die. The souls that sin in the days of Noah, they died, isn't it? And if God were to remain just, that means you have to wipe everybody again according to his justice. And the father said, I have a plan. Let the whole world come into one man by covenant. And let that man pay the price for everybody. Are you following me now? And Jesus volunteered to be that one man. How did the whole world enter into him? What we call the covenant of the communion. Hmm. Hallelujah. There were 12 people in the upper room. I hope you know 12 is the prophetic number of a government. And the government represents people. 24 elders 12 from the old covenant 12 from the new covenant 24 elders representing the full government of god are you following me now and so jesus took the bread now he said something he said there is a technology in the spirit we call it in theology the doctrine of interpenetration how that someone can enter another person by covenant that's what happens when a man and a woman get married whether they believe it or not, the Bible says in the realm of the spirit, they are seen as one person. That's what happened in Genesis 11. The Bible says he looked and he saw that the people is one. He didn't say are one. Is one. Maybe grammatically wrong, but spiritually very, very correct. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? And so, when there was a communion, Jesus Christ broke himself into many dimensions and gave the whole world using 12 people as a point of contact. He said, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in me. It's in your Bible. Don't stone me yet. Let's just keep on moving. Hallelujah. Except ye eat my flesh. <laughs> when you take the communion, what do you do? I think you say, Lord, as we eat your body and drink your blood. That's why a lot of people who are not believers cannot understand. They say, these guys are witches and wizards. You eat his flesh and drink his blood. And now when they took the cup, let me tell you what happened. They gave Jesus Christ legal access to become seen. Are you following me now? Because right after the upper room, he, there was the Gethsemane experience. What really happened in Gethsemane, ladies and gentlemen? I need you to understand that Jesus did not just die on the cross. He finished his death on the cross. He started his death in Gethsemane. How do I know that? By the Pauline revelation, the Bible says he became the second Adam. If he must become the second Adam, that means he must pass through what Adam passed through. Is that correct? You will agree with me that Adam first died spiritually before he died physically. In the year that you will eat of that tree, you will die. How many more years did Adam live after he ate of the tree? So he wasn't just talking about physical deterioration. The Bible says through sin, death came. Death was a natural consequence of sin. Are you following me now? 
that that death meant a separation with the spirit of god so for jesus christ to really die spiritually the holy spirit would have to leave him the exact same way he left man in the garden that was the only condition for him to become the second adam hallelujah when the holy spirit departed from him when they beat him they saw blood because blood is a sign of mortality blood is proof that you have now belonged to this realm the man in the beginning had no blood in him when jesus resurrected there was no blood in him all the blood had been drained out according to hebrews and offered in the heavenly tabernacle yet he walked even without blood let it first sink can we continue now thank you jesus and so when jesus went to the cross that was the whole world in him now watch this jesus offered himself and satan began to lead people to kill and to destroy him i follow me now little did he know that god was using satan as a workman to bring the prophecy and the restoration of the kingdom that's why paul said ah had they known this they would never crucify the king of glory paul said if satan ever knew that he was a fool trying to help god achieve his agenda are you following me now jesus gave up himself and he said satan you can now have me and when judas kissed him and they held him there was joy in hell finally the seed of the woman captured and god was watching the angels could not understand but the all wise god was watching prophecy in manifestation i follow me now when they were beating jesus they were beating me and you in him so we were paying the legal claims of justice in christ now satan did not understand that and he was saying beat him and it was me and you are you following me now cursed is every man that hangs upon a tree for it is written it says christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangs upon the tree that the blessings of abraham might come upon the gentiles that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith hallelujah and so everyone that hangs upon the tree is cursed so when jesus i hope you know that it was the tree that made man fell and jesus took that exact tree and he moved to golgotha called the place of skull in judaism they believed that where jesus was crucified was the exact spot where adam died why do you think it's called the place of the skull whose skull? <laughs> anyway let's continue hallelujah and when jesus was hung upon a tree he represented me and you we were paying the legal claims of justice in him are you following me now i hope you realize that jesus died a sinner that was why the father turned his face from jesus because jesus had now become me and you our sin nature correct the bible says he who knew no sin became sin hallelujah he took up our nature and became sin so that we might be the righteousness of god and when sinners die where do they go to answer me when sinners die where did they go to so when jesus died where did he go to are you following me now now watch this when jesus gave up the ghost when he descended to hell there was joy there was partying and joy because satan said i hope you realize that satan knew that jesus christ could not be stopped from restoring the kingdom i hope you know that because the father himself spoke and satan was once in heaven and he knew the power of the father's word i follow me that was why when jesus came he said jesus i know all you want is this key bow to me and let me reduce your journey and give it to you that was what he was doing in the temptation he said i know you will get it but can you bow to me because the bible calls jesus christ the express image of the father so if you see in the in judaism and in, in in israel when you bow to someone you have acknowledged the lordship of that person over your life and so he was saying satan bow to me so that he can say father look at the full expression of you bowing to me therefore he would have achieved 
what caused the rebellion in heaven and that's why jesus refused are you following me now now satan jesus went to hell in the midst of the partying and the rejoicing that the agenda of god had been thwarted satan suddenly saw jesus christ in hell and paul gives us the drama that happened in hell satan said all right since you will not bow by choice you will bow by force and the bible says all the cohorts of darkness were upon him is in your bible i'm just creating a drama out of it hallelujah they were forcing him to bow and according to the prophecy that was given Isaiah, he said he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied when you offend somebody and they deal with the person you derive satisfaction from the punishment you see the travail that's why they punish people in the court of law and so the bible says because god has been offended when he sees the travail of the sinner who offended him he will be satisfied when are you following me now when the legal claims of justice was over the bible says jesus made a public show of them that was what was happening in hell he made a public show of them and he walked to satan and said satan give me the keys give me the keys that adam and all of us in him by covenant we stretch our hands and say give us back the keys so that we will now be reinstated as the kings the legal owners of the earth are you following me now and so we stretched our hands in prophecy when he collected the keys on the third day you see when jesus was born angels were there after his temptation angels ministered to him when he resurrected angels were there but at his crucifixions, angels were, were not there. They wanted, they could not understand. I can imagine Michael so uncomfortable saying, Father, what in the world is going on? Let us come and I mean, he could have called 10,000 angels. And on the third day, the father said, Angels, now you can go. And I can imagine Michael, the archangel in charge of war. The Bible says that glorious morning, he came with such force and rolled the stone and sat on it. Let me see the person who will roll it back. hallelujah he rolled the stone and sat on it hear me let me prove to you that the holy spirit left jesus christ if that same spirit that resurrected christ that means when jesus was dead the spirit was not in him because the spirit came back and resurrected christ from the dead and like christ every man who accepts the gift of the lord that same spirit will quicken him to now become a life-giving spirit are you following me now and so jesus resurrected and then satan said it's obvious right now that the plan has failed so the next strategy is let's pay people to say he did not resurrect are you following me now that was the plan b and so satan is paying mtv I'm paying channel O to prove that Jesus is not alive. And then the father is saying, no cause for alarm. I still have generals. They are called the remnant. Follow me. There were 12 men, 70 others, who were being trained for a mission that they did not even understand. Are you following me now? When Jesus resurrected, he spent some time teaching them the things of the kingdom and when he left the bible says on the day of pentecost something happened the spirit of god came upon them and he told them something he said when that activity happens they should know that it's a sign that they will be ambassadors witnesses a witness in the court of law is one who validates that the claim of someone is true is that correct now since we were not there when jesus christ was born the holy ghost who was there was put in us so that his outworkings in our lives will validate that although we were not there physically because of his presence in us we will live and prove to the world that he truly resurrected are you following me now that's really what impartation and anointing is God's authorization upon you 
that you have been legalized to be an ambassador his anointing upon your life is his authorization to let you know that you have been earmarked and you have been anointed how god anointed jesus christ of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power to do something are you following me now but that's not really our subject of discussion tonight i was just giving us a background to understand that from genesis chapter 3 are you following me now up to the restoration up to the um john 21 we call that the restoration of the kingdom so the bible begins by the existence of the kingdom hallelujah genesis chapter 2 and 3 the colony of that kingdom on earth is corrupted by disobedience from genesis 3 to john 21 the activity that leads to the restoration of the kingdom are you following me now from acts chapter 1 hear me from acts chapter 1 until revel uh, the uh, the book of acts chapter 1 gives us the manifestation of the first fruits of that restoration are you listening to me and then all the epistles that paul wrote and peter and all of these people was to strengthen the brethren and help them to be able to live out manifesting that kingdom and then interestingly the bible ends in revelation with the beginning of a new age hallelujah revelation makes us to understand that after the church age the church age is what is encapsulated in the letters to the seven churches seven stands for perfection although they were real churches found in asia minor but they were prophetic they were symbolic churches representing the full span of the church age and after the dispensation of the church age then we have the vials and the judgment that will come upon the earth hallelujah and then after all of these things the bible makes us to understand that death hell and the grave will be casted into the lake of fire i hope you realize that what we call hell is not the same as the lake of fire the lake of fire is part of god's kingdom he designed it by himself for the punishment of satan and as many who will be part of his agenda so why is satan still pursuing human beings for two reasons number one to stop the manifestation of god's agenda and then number two to find enough people satan still believes that if you can get the entire earth are you listening to me to reject jesus christ god can reconsider his punishment because god still loves the world hallelujah so what is the gospel of the kingdom how many of you believe we're in the end times don't feel sad i believe it we're in the end times if you don't believe it then you are not current we are in the end times but the question i have is this listen to me what makes you think it is the end times hallelujah because the bible says nation shall rise against nation isn't it it said kingdom against kingdom that's not the sign of the end time read your bible there's nowhere in scripture where the bible calls that the sign of the end time necessarily it's theologians that call that the sign of the end times the bible says it is the beginning of the birth pains there is only one sign the bible gives as the sign of the end time this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness that means he say everywhere you see the apostles and prophets the moment you see that a focus comes on the kingdom let it be an alert across the earth that the end is coming Are you listening to me and right now in king's glory in every other ministry that truly fears god there is an emphasis on the kingdom it tells you that the times are coming. are you listening to me what is the gospel of the kingdom listen to me the gospel of the kingdom is an ideology listen is a mindset is a philosophy that seeks to enthrone christ as king over his kingdom are you listening to me the gospel of the kingdom is simply a mindset it's an ideology the bible says go into all the earth teach them this gospel put this mindset in them that makes jesus the christ because he has an agenda 
what is his agenda that at the dispensation according to Colossians 1 and Ephesians chapter 1 that all things be headed up in Christ and how is that going to be achieved Jesus Christ submitted to the authority of the Father are you listening to me now the church submits to the authority of Jesus Christ and by authority the world will submit to the authority of the church when that happens then the equation is perfect the eternal counsel of God as far as the dispensation of the church age will now be fulfilled and then we will be open to a new age that we do not know and that's why the Bible begins what we call eternity is a summation of infinite ages we only know that we are right now in another age revelations ends by the beginning of a new age it just gives us a preview into the next age and it stops there he says sufficient is that let's work with this age that's why when he calls himself alpha and omega that's a dangerous statement he means that he began the ages and when you go to the last of the age if there will any ever be he has already been there it's not alpha and omega it's alpha omega are you listening to me now listen so god calls a man are you listening to me can i have someone come let me use you as an example please come pastor watch this you now understand the agenda of the kingdom that god wants his governing influence his culture his lifestyle are you listening to me his mindset a culture a mindset that seeks to enthrone christ as king above first the hearts of people and above the systems this is the message of the gospel are you following me now that christ be king of kings and first he has to be king in the hearts of men that's what we call born again are you listening to me that jesus becomes your savior follow me there are two conditions to be born again i will show you that many people are not really born again when you say jesus is savior it's an act of faith hallelujah are you listening to me because it's on account of his finished work you didn't do anything everything was done by grace we are saved by grace through faith but when you call him lord he says i'm watching lordship is not by faith there is a practical manifestation that enthrones him as lord why do you call me lord lord and will not do there is a doing that validates that he's lord of your life are you following me now so i see a lot of believers do all kinds of nonsense in the name of jesus christ this is the balance to many teachings of our new creation reality there must be balance so you sleep with a lady in the name of jesus you loot in the name of jesus you bribe by the power of the holy ghost you do all kinds of things he may be savior but your life has not validated that he is lord and those who are true citizens of this kingdom are those who have come under the governing influence of the king they have chosen to make him lord you make him lord by dying to yourself and say lord i lay aside my will and i take up your will your purpose your counsel can i tell you something that's what we call the making process everything about the training and the building of god is to bring you to a point where you understand that there is a government above you are you listening to me and then you realize that you do not have a life of your own that you do not have an agenda of your own that if you are a musician every time you stand to minister when you have been furnished and trained by the spirit then you understand that your message is to reveal the reality of the governing influence of the father to people so that when you lift up a voice and sing and you say holy holy there's something from your life they know that this is not a rebellious citizen of the kingdom are you listening to me there is a communication from your word that draws people closer to god and then you see people kneeling down why do you kneel down the bible says at the mention of his name every knee shall bow is acknowledging that he's lord the name that was given to him in his coronation service is not jesus jesus is the name he got when he became flesh the name is lord every tongue shall confess that jesus is lord lord means the master and the owner can I tell you something before we ever talk of enlargement there must be a restoration to the government of Christ 
we must do the reverse of what Cain did because Cain departed from the presence of God and he built a city Channel O is a manifestation of Babylon in view I follow me now there is a clash of two kingdoms the Zion of God and Babylon that's the reason why if you want to make money in the world system the Illuminati and Freemasons bring you under the governing influence of a system that supervises that you are advancing the cause of Satan hallelujah that's what we call 666 6 is the number of a man I follow me now it's the manifestation of the mimicking of Antichrist the first six is Satan trying to be God the second six is the Antichrist the figure Antichrist the Antichrist is both a figure and a system the system had been in existence but there will be a figure that will manifest at the end of times I follow me now the Antichrist tries to be Jesus that's why he will not marry he will not have any affair with people he will be of both human and spiritual origin an influential leader these are the characteristics the Bible gives us about the Antichrist and then the last six stands for the false prophets that try to become the Holy Spirit is Satan trying to mimic himself as God therefore there is a call what is that call number one a call of loyalty say after me loyalty Christianity is not a religion we have taught it as a religion we have fought over denominations we have preached all kinds of messages can I tell you something the ministers are not the apostles and prophets they are the the apostles and the prophets are the gifts that equip the ministers the ministers are everybody every one of you sitting down here so when you say you are a ministry it doesn't mean you are standing on the pulpit to say you are a ministry means you have been enrolled in this great kingdom where Christ himself is king are you following me now and the Holy Spirit holds your hand and begins to make you how does he make you he brings you to a point where you lose confidence in every other thing aside from God this is the part that they don't teach in church I'm showing you the gateway to anointing and influence and power there is a making many people who stumbled into the anointing were not even looking for anointing they were just yielding to the dealings of the spirit and they collided with certain levels of authority in the spirit when they came out of these trainings a badge was given to them that creates a response in the realm of the spirit hallelujah are you getting blessed when you come under the governing influence of god can i tell you something not titles not money all this rat race people do about money it shows you the degree to which they have not been yielded to the government of christ if one million naira will make you suddenly look at the pastor say come and clean my leg i get hundred thousand jerry you see that you are not dead in yourself for you to serve god he must kill your flesh then his glory will resurrect you and then you will attain a realm in the spirit called galatians 2 20 I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ that lives in me and the life that I live in the flesh that is the body I live by the faith of the Son of God friends I show you the gateway to access of the deep things and the revelation of the Spirit so God brings you to a point where you love him more than ministry he brings you to a point where your 50,000 era suit will not stand the way of the Spirit he will bring you to a point where you love him more than titles you become an addict of the kingdom you love what he loves you hate what he hates his word becomes the value system of your life at that point you have become the citizen of the kingdom so your mindset there is a reorientation hallelujah he orients your mind to a point where you have embraced his value system as your value system when that happens then it will be done in the earth as it is in the heavens he said your kingdom come how whenever your will is being done so everywhere the will of the father is allowed to manifest his kingdom comes i believe i believe Lord, 
I believe Lord I believe I believe I believe Lord I believe Lord I believe When God calls men He doesn't send them and give them spheres of influence you spend time training can i tell you something friends that training can take a while moses spent 40 years in the wilderness jesus spent 30 years it's only in nigeria that we do not value training you want to train yourself for one month to do something that will the bible says if your strength if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small Generals of the kingdom understand that strength is built in the place of training. So when you feel qualified and you want to run, God will draw you back and say, by my standard, you are not yet. To. And you say, how about God? Somebody who is less anointed than me is already running TV program. God will say, sit down. I am the one training you. Except it's not me you are representing. Sit down. And God gives you a dangerous word of knowledge that if published in a newspaper can expand your ministry and God will say still sit down yes you are killing the lion you are killing the bear David go back to the wilderness even after Samuel anointed him he went back are you getting blessed because I tell you something those who will change this nation have not yet been seen they are the remnant who are still under training nobody knows them they are in the media they are in the educational sector they are, there is there are certain musicians you have been writing your raps for years you have not released even one your friends are saying oh lord do you don't know how nigeria moves and every time you want to move god says no way there is a beauty there is a furnishing for when you step out you will step out in the power and the glory of the king having been trained I don't know if we have time but maybe we'll stop and then tomorrow we'll talk about the progression from Jerusalem and then I'll show you how that when God wants to bless you the first thing he does is by light he enlarges your capacity to receive he imparts anointing upon your life then he enlarges your sphere of influence he brings you to a point where the anointing can be able to meet a larger sphere one definition of frustration in ministry let me tell you something we went for a crusade in 2006 we had amazing miracles mighty manifestations of the spirit at the end of it the pfn called me and said we want you to come and establish a branch of your church And it looks like it's expansion, isn't it? Let me tell you something. Not every open door is anointed. You can force some doors and they will open. But if it's not by God, you will return back no matter how far you have gone. The worst carryover is not in your academics. It's in the school of the spirit. No matter how far you go, you must come back and take those classes. There are many people that after 20 years in ministry, the lapses of certain classes they jumped is showing in their ministry that's why we must be trained thoroughly by the spirit are you getting blessed tonight that's why this conference was put together we'll find somewhere soon and stop because of time hallelujah there are impartations going on that's what happens when the word of god enters your spirit it gives you an alignment and a mindset hallelujah and when I went to pray about it, God told me something. He said, son, you will die. I quietly called the PFN. I said, thank you very much. I appreciate your effort. But my sphere of influence has not got... Let me tell you. As at that time, I was walking in amazing manifestations of the anointing. So don't you think I was just trying to learn to drive the vehicle of the anointing? Are you listening to me? Your anointing is not proof that it's time to move. It can be misleading. Miracles and word of knowledge is not a sign that it's time to move. 
for after david was anointed he remained in the wilderness the bible says john remained in the wilderness until the time of his appearing there is a time when it synchronizes with the time of heaven not even you can stop yourself saul did not know that it was his, his time of appearing god orchestrated an event and made a donkey get missing and he meandered his way into prophecy already samuel had been told the same thing happened to david he carried food to go and give his brothers little did he know that it was a journey let me tell you something god will not even tell you when it's time the first day i saw the manifestation of the anointing of god on my life i used to go and just pray drill myself in the spirit study the word spend hours we will worship those days and the power of god will come upon us we'll just cry and roll on the floor and just enjoy ourselves and one day i went to pray and a gentleman came to me and he said that he sneaked out from a school a secondary school and there was trouble and i led him to christ and when i led him to christ i was going to pray for him the moment i lifted up my hands i just saw him on the floor i was as surprised as everybody i said what in the world is going on a true student in the school of the spirit you are too busy obeying god you will not even know when you have stepped into some dangerous anointings until you climb the pulpit suddenly when i began to flow in word of knowledge it was on stage one day i was just moving suddenly i began to see certain things can i tell you something when god trains you in the secret when you step on stage you will not mess up many people mess up on stage because they have not rehearsed properly in the secret place so they call god names that he does not know in the secret place you are the lion of the tribe of judah the power of god will move and they do all kinds of gymnastics and god is saying you are on your own only preparation will save us this dimension of embarrassment hallelujah that you look at somebody and say look at my eyes and he falls you just summon disciples to yourself and say we are going to the ends of the earth Augusta, there are doors in the realm of the spirit and let me tell you something you will open a door that will end your life very soon you are not weak and beggarly when you are constrained by the spirit you are only being prepared for a set time hallelujah am i preaching to somebody and so god trains you as he builds you he brings you to a point where your ego is stung god stung my ego stung my reputation stung everything that can be stung out of me the things i feared most came upon me all the things that caused me to fear came upon me at the point i said god what's the point i prayed for people prayed for people nobody got healed nobody got nothing i mean you people see us today and you don't know that we had our own shares of stories at the point i said god i have been embarrassed to a point that i don't care again that's the point of faith you are really dead when it does not yet matter and then sometimes you worship with your reputation you are conscious and then you come to a point where you have been so wiped out by his grace and then you can kneel down and just say lord you are lord jare ministry or no ministry have your way hmm. are you listening to me can i tell you something there is a sword of judgment that will come upon the body of christ and that sword is going to cause a separation those who have been incubated in the school of the spirit those who have been well aligned and positioned for the revival can i tell you something obadiah 21 saviors shall arise out of zion and they shall judge the mount of esau there is coming a judgment and we are these generals the first call tonight is that we must understand the agenda of the kingdom that everywhere i am I have a singular mission to make his kingdom come 
that the fullness of the life and the power and the grace and the culture of the king is allowed to manifest are you following me now that means you do not have an agenda of your own are you listening to me and that's going to be our prayer tonight we will raise a cry and say lord bring us to that point where you are king of kings and lord of lords rise up on your feet please. your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns. they have all the money but they go on air and they have access to the spirits of millions of people and for 30 years they are teaching nonsense and rubbish conjuring heresy whose god is their belly and god says not so there will come a judgment the remnant is about to arise hear me that's why when your season of expansion comes your training is amplified by the spirit and around three a woman who was with jesus christ every day of 2005 every single day she was with jesus christ and she had the opportunity to go to a room in heaven and she saw the generals of old william branham and all our fathers of faith are you listening to me and they were being asked what happened during their revivals why didn't it last why was it corrupted and Ruth Evelyn, I mean, um, and around three, she had the opportunity to hear the dialogue about the revival that we are going to pioneer. And part of what she heard was that there will be two angels walking with a person so that, and then there will be thorough training by the spirit. Because what happened was many of the people who manifested, they didn't even know what they were walking in. And so there was no alignment. Can I tell you something, friends? The real revivalists have not yet manifested they are not the ones you are seeing in your screens thank god for those people they are preparing the way but they are only john the baptist the real voices are coming out some of you you have nothing to do with music but when that time comes the hand of god will take you out of what your plans have been for the sake of that revival hallelujah at that time we will no longer compose songs we will receive them from the throne the song we just sang blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord it was a song that was gotten in a dream exactly like that unedited hallelujah the song that i wrote we hail you most high i didn't write it i got it in the spirit these were the melodies that we got and we just recorded it that's why every time you hear these songs they carry the atmosphere that they came from so you can sing them for weeks and it will still carry the freshness of eternity there is coming a generation that will function from that rhyme of eternity and tonight we have a cry even as we brace up for enlargement the first prayer point is oh god let every idol that is above you crumble there are idols called ministry there are idols called anointing listen if you don't believe in what i'm saying you can go home have a nice day but this meeting is for those who believe somehow you know that there is this hand you have been recruited into this army they are not people who have spent 30 years in theology schools they are nobodies who have learned to stay in the spirit would you lift up your voice and begin to pray he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you can i tell you something the fastest way into prosperity the fastest way into enlargement is to come to that point where god can have your heart when he has your heart there are many of us you go to a place with your ringtone and when it's ringing Jesus is alive, you quickly off it. You are not dead enough. When you become dead, everything around your life will directly reflect His glory. At that point, you are aligning yourself for real expansion and increase. 
Hallelujah. So we are going to pray. Because, you see friends, I have to round up. We've not even started talking about enlargement. Whatever we can stop. There are other servants of God that will take over. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. The degree to which you will allow God to be seen the degree to which you will allow his culture, his value system, his mindset to be enforced and enshrined in your life is the degree to which you will experience his grace. Can I tell you, above and beyond your prayer life, hear me, above and beyond your fasting and prayer, above and beyond your word life is the state of your heart. It becomes the ultimate determinant of the gates that will be opened unto you. Jeremiah 17, it says, I the Lord, I test the heart and I try the conscience to reward every man according to my findings. Can I tell you something? Embedded in the heart of every man outside of Christ is wickedness enshrined. It's like a DNA. The same David who you will never believe that he loved God, enshrined in his heart was lust and wickedness. It manifested when he became king. Can I tell you something? There are certain tendencies that you do not even know you have until certain levels of liftings come. They are resident and they are enshrined. So you think you are okay and God tells you, stay and let me work on you. And he said, Lord, as far as I can see, I don't have a problem. You have never handled one million of your own. So you do not know the peculiarities that surround that level of life. Suddenly, you come to a point where since 80% of your prayer points are money related, now you, have, you are a millionaire. 80% of your prayer points is gone. You don't know what else to tell God. And God says, you see the tendency coming out. David came to a point where he could write a letter and give Uriah to go and kill his own death sentence. Who would have known that that kind of wickedness was enshrined in David's heart? David who refused to kill Saul. Can I tell you something, friends? I know that we are one in Christ. And we are the righteousness of God. But you see, as you become matured in the spirit, you will get to certain levels where when you say, God, I need your mercy to purge my heart. It's not because you have slept with a woman. Is because of the new levels of light that you are seeing. Isaiah said, Woe is me. I hope you know he was a prophet. Are you listening to me? We'll have to round up now. We are going to pray. Tonight, I'd like us to go back and search and say, God, dethrone everything in me that will not allow me to keep your value system. Can I tell you something? There are many things. There are many of us who are inside the world outside of God is not the issue of stop it it's the issue of do you love God enough do you respect him enough many people believe God but we do not respect him it's called the fear of the Lord when the fear of the Lord comes upon you and is enshrined in your spirit you come to a point where he is king of kings and lord of lords so one prayer point Jesus I enthrone you go ahead and pray